This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Constance Zimmer, uh, who is starring in, or one of the stars of Results, which is playing here at South by Southwest. Um, people might know you from any litany of things. Most recently, House of Cards, uh, Entourage, which you know the movie's coming back for. I, uh, I was a fan of Good Morning Miami, which we were talking about a little bit off camera. Thank you. Uh, newsroom as well. Thank um, you. So, one of the first things I want to talk about before we get too deep into this film is just. You have a very diverse background, and I was kind of curious as to what that's like in terms of, you know, acting comedically, acting dramatically. Like, I, one of my favorite things is to see comedic actors go dramatic, because it really resonates that much more. As an actor for you, what do you enjoy doing the most? Do you consciously think about the parts you pick to sort of go against those types? Or is this, is this even something you think about as you are offered projects? Well... First of all, like in the be in the beginning of your career as an actor, you don't really have a choice. Uh, you just kind Fair of, enough, yeah. you know, you get the parts that people decide they think you're right for. Um, I definitely started in comedy. I mean, I did sitcoms. That was all the first stuff I, I did. did. Good morning, Miami. Right, and um, and everybody said to me, "Oh, it's so sad. You know, people are going to label you as a sitcom actress, and you're never going to be able to do anything dramatic." Mm. When I had trained in dramatic, I had trained in Shakespeare, and I had done theater and all this kind of stuff. And so I said, "Oh, okay. Well, when Good Morning Miami was, you know, over." I said, oh, well, so maybe what I should do is get a drama so that right away people will see that I can do drama. Yeah. So see, that answers your question as far as like, you yes. You consciously you, thought you about consciously, it, at least to begin with. Yeah, you have to. You yeah. have to. Otherwise, you'll be put in a box right away. Uh, but what happened is then I got put in a box dramatically, and mm -hmm. I had only, I went and I did a show called Injustice, which mm -hmm. was with Kyle MacLachlan and Jason O'Mara, and it was... Um, the Innocence Project, um, okay, yeah, yeah. where it's all about trying to get people out of jail, death row, and, out of death row and stuff. Yeah. And I was the comedy relief, which is why I got the part on the drama, because I was the comic uh. relief. Except they realized, probably a couple episodes in, that you can't really make light of, of death row any of that that is going on. So that kind of slowly went away. And then I've, I've done dramas ever since. Which is heartbreaking to me because my love is actually comedy. I mean, Entourage, you're pretty funny on at times. Well, I, it's, it's funny, though, because I don't see Dana as funny. I see the show as being a comedy, but, like, I'm always yelling. I'm always, like, Well, I mean, who, who's going to argue that Ari Gold <laughs> isn't funny? And he yells That's constantly. True. So, That's like, true. I mean, I think it's those relationships are that, that are funny. Right. Um, but you raise an interesting point in that you were put in this box and I mean, I don't want to say what you think of your career at this point, but in some ways it feels like the bulk of your success has been in television. Have you felt like you've been sort of boxed into TV, which ironically is kind of funny because now TV is becoming more interesting than movies? I so. know. Well, I think about five years ago, if not more than that, um, m movie stars, quote unquote, oh, yeah. started crossing over into television. Usually, and, yeah. You know, Jennifer Aniston was doing movies after Friends, and it was like, oh my God, I can't believe a TV actress is doing films. But then once the barrier was broken, I, I don't think it, it doesn't exist anymore. Oh, yeah, no I mean, doubt. everybody's doing everything because honestly, all we want as artists is to go where the good work is. And I think personally, it's mostly in TV just because there's so much ability to flesh out a story instead of, you know, like right. two hours or whatever you're really given, which is pretty tough. Yeah, but I will say, I mean, I was super excited because when I, I, I mean, getting results last year and I had also gotten this other movie, um, Run the Tide, and I, 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 I was like, oh my God, people think I can do movies now. And I actually accredited the, that to House of Cards and Newsroom being a little bit more kind of feeling like their movies. Oh, for sure. There's you know, a very, I mean, especially House of Cards. Shows. I mean, right off the bat with your, like, dealing with David Fincher, what's a right. $100 million budget or whatever, right off right. the bat. So it's, like, clearly a huge um, step up in terms of production values. But, yeah, what is it like in terms of these opportunities that you now have, whether it's from House of Cards newsroom or whatever? Do you, do you really selectively say, like, oh, I want to try an indie because I'll have more ability to create an interesting character or are or, or, or there like massive like you know Avengers 2 roles or something that like you could 
No, I, again, it's like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I still don't really have any say in the parts that I get and I don't get. There's a lot of stuff that I would love to have gotten. I have a lot of sway. I'll get you into Avengers not. 3. No, no problem. I'm just saying right now. Um, you know, it's still, it's still a name market out there. And I think with indie movies is where people can still be discovered. Um, people are getting discovered now on television in like Amazon shows and Hulu shows and all that kind of stuff as well. But, you know, for me, I felt like, oh my God, I broke into the indie world. I got so excited. And especially with someone like Andrew Buschowski, which I was like, he's like the indie. He's very king. much on the, yeah. And um, that to me was like, oh my God, does this mean now that now I've been accepted in that world? But let me tell you, this is what's funnier is that the perception also goes the other way because Andrew, when I spoke with him, <laughs> he said, oh, I had no idea you would be willing to do this movie. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, it's, it's sex scenes with Guy Pierce. Of course I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, not, it's not too shabby of a job opportunity for sure. But it's also, it's interesting that you, you, you talk about um, uh, t, t, uh, movie stars going to TV. It seems like a lot of movie stars are also going to indie. Indie seems to be getting a lot more attention from major actors. I, I mean, I don't know what the cause of that is. I'm sure somebody at some point was like a major actor and was in an indie and everyone else was like, oh, this is intriguing. The parts are more interesting, blah, 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 blah. Um, what, did, what was your sort of perception of indie film um, prior to acting in like this movie and stuff? Were you always a fan of it? Would you oh, try yeah. and keep up on it? Like, For sure. I mean, I know that all like, the, some of my first jobs were doing like AFI movies and, wow. you know, student films. There were, that was how you got work as an actor mm, when like yeah, yeah. you couldn't get work elsewhere. And so you would go and you do student films. And that to me is the beginning of where the indies all started. You know, all these people yeah. coming out of AFI and, uh, you know, um, USC and all these different film schools sure. and stuff. So, um, and I, I feel like I did an indie movie a long time ago, but, but then I just, I got into the TV world and mm. I thought, oh, well, this is nice. It's also comfortable. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say like, you know, yeah. you gave up like your integrity or anything like that, but there's a certain level of comfort on being on a recurring part on a TV show. Like movies right. come and go. Right. There is a nice comfort to that element, I guess. Well, and I will say I also had like this quality problem where um, I, I was on two shows forever because mm -hmm. Entourage I was always recurring on and they always shot in the summer. And then the other shows I was on as a regular, it would shoot from August to <laughs> March. So I literally line up pretty perfectly. I pretty much never even had a time, like mm. had time to do a movie, which seems silly, but it That's just it, you know what I mean. Like it was always oh, this. Totally. I had to be available for my shows. So now um, the way shows are being shot, and they're doing ten episodes instead of twenty three. Which I think is a great thing. It is. You know, I think people get bored. Twenty three episodes. That's a lot. It's, everything gets so stretched out. Like right. it's. I, I would rather a shorter season where it's much more punch. Um, but that sort of makes me think of an interesting question. You know, talking about your opportunities and whatnot. Have you thought about you know? writing more of your own work, directing your like own projects, that kind of stuff, where you can really um, truly control what you're doing and what kind of parts you're playing. I mean, I don't know if you want to be in a horror film or a sci-fi film or an action film. Like, right. I, don't, I don't know what your aspirations are. but you Right. Know. My aspirations literally are to just keep working until I'm 90. That's that, a, that's those a, are my aspirations. That seems like a very achievable... Uh, I just, uh, that's, that's all I care about is just good. to that's keep great. working um, and kind of keep... You know, you have to keep reinventing yourself mm. in a way that is acceptable to to the audience that you've already kind of brought in which is because you know like there's Julia Roberts for instance like she did Pretty Woman and she was like the sweetheart and all she could ever do were movies where she was a sweetheart yeah. and then she goes and she did that like horror film uh, it was like kind of like a Dracula type movie where she's the maid oh in yeah that. I don't even was remember it, the name it, of it um, was that related to uh... what was that uh, heck, J Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Something like, like that. Like, yeah. It was some kind of, and she yeah. did that movie and, the, and America was like, no, we can't, that's not who you are to us. So it's, you know, you have to, and then she went back to doing what she does and then everybody loved her again. Well, she won the Academy Award for, um, what's it called? It, uh, where she played the, uh, Secretary or uh, Aaron Brockman. She oh yes, her. she was and awesome. So, but that's the beautiful thing about that. Oh, that's against type, and that's why, like as I said, I love to see comedians 
grow dramatic because yeah. it's so different and it's so, like it actually I'm like oh this person like not to say that comedy doesn't take talent but I'm like there is this sort of general perception that drama is harder to do than comedy and in actuality when I think about it I think it's the opposite no it is it is it's actually it's much harder to do comedy than drama which is what it seems there's like there's a lot of dramatic actors that will never do comedies because they just well timing and whatnot yeah. is so much more precise but yeah. the easy perception though is comedy is easier than drama and that's why like even though it's completely illogical I, I like to see that diverse performance because it's like oh this person can really act even though I'm like you know I already right. knew they could act. So that's like when, when I see you on something like House of Cards where you're really, I mean, you're tough on Entourage, but you're like another level of like. Uh, Just another level of tough. Well, I right, mean, exactly. I don't, I don't want to say like that's all that character is, but like it's really like. Right. You, it's not like I'm fucking here to make you like wisecracks or something like that. And, it's, yeah. and that's what's so engaging about those performances. And I mean, I don't want to say like you're wrong in your philosophy of do what, you know, your audience likes, but I like. To see you doing different. Well, role. but let me let me tell you something. It's because I'm, I'm one person. No, <laughs> but it's because I'm cons I'm a character actress, so I'm allowed to go and do other things and other characters and other concepts of uh, people. Whereas big like leading ladies are not necessarily allowed to do that. Sure, you're absolutely right. There's you definitely know, much like more a pretty, pressure. Like a pretty girl, Charlize Theron, obviously gets nominated for an Oscar when she does Monster because they're like, oh my God, a pretty girl looks ugly. Like, oh my God, that's amazing. It is, it is. And she <laughs> was great in the movie as but well. But you're absolutely right. There but, is a certain amount of it that's right. like, oh my God. Right. Or Nicole Kidman in the hours where it's like, she exactly. wore a, a nose. Yeah, looks and everyone's terrible. like, oh my God, a nose. But it, it's, it's very, this business is super crazy. And I'm just excited that there's so much more now out there, television, streaming, internet, that people are going to be allowed to do it whether you want them to or not. Because if, the, if, if, if someone doesn't write it for them, they'll write it for themselves. So in terms of um, results, how did this get put on your radar and how did you sort of get sucked into it? Because, I mean, obviously... I'm not saying you two aren't a good match together, but it's like, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I have no idea. Maybe he, Andrew was thinking of you right off the bat in terms of casting or something like that. But it's, it's like, you, as you said, you're a very busy actress with things like, you know, um, House of Cards and whatnot. And it's, it's sort of like, is this something that, you know, came through a friend or something? Like, how did this get brought to Well, you? I will say I, th I credit my agent, actually, a lot because she sold Andrew on me. He was a fan, but he the, the part that I play in results is not a part that I would ever get offered normally because it goes completely against type, quote unquote, as we're tr as this right, everything yeah, we're talking yeah. about, which is why I wanted to do it even more, That's and great, which yeah. is why uh, you know Andrew I think was so excited in the end that even he was like, look, I'm willing to believe you can do it. You're you know he was such a huge fan and mm -hmm. he said if you want to do it I am more than happy to have you and I can't believe you would take this small of a part and I said here's the thing though yes it's a small part but it's a part that people need to remember mm -hmm. I'm capable of playing that kind of like super ditzy over the top like tight clothes like everything that I am not Right. You need, to, and it doesn't matter how small the part is because it's it's the people that were in it as well. I mean, working with Andrew, I really wanted to do, and you know, again, sex scenes with Guy Pierce. It was like my husband <laughs> even said, like, if you're not going to do that, I will yeah. say, ask yeah. if I can. I will sign the contract for you. <laughs> right, exactly. So I mean, that's the. There was a lot of reasons why, and I do know that my agents really sold Andrew yes. on me. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, is there an element, like, what is the sort of, I don't, I mean, I don't want to tell you to do, like, the mathematics of it, because that's absurd, but, like, what is the percentage of, in terms of picking projects of stuff that, like, you see it as, like, something you'd be passionate about, or something that you have to be practical, and that, like, this could open opportunities, this is, you know, a gateway drug, or whatever, you know, uh, versus, like, this is a movie, like, I would fucking want to see if I wasn't in it, if I can be in it, I fucking want to be in that film. Like, right. How, how does that sort of work out for you? I mean, I, obviously, you know, you're not like getting thousands of scripts dumped on your door every day. Right. So there's a practical element to it. But like, how much of it are you able to sort of say like, I'm incredibly passionate about this project. I want that one sort of. Uh, you know, 
It, I think it depends. I mean, if I hear about something that I can't, I'm not getting in on, I definitely fight to get in and try and, you know, prove myself. Um, there's definitely also a practicality about things that I will do or take and things that I will say, look, I don't care if I get paid no money. Mm -hmm. I just want to do it. Sure. You know, and so, and, and I'm in such a kind of a great, I'm very grateful to where I am in my career um, where I don't get a lot of stuff offered to me. And so it, it is definitely a, a, perception of like, I would love to do that. If they're going to consider me, that's awesome. I will go in and I will fight. And <laughs> sometimes I've won and that's, that feels really good. And then other times when a project like this comes and I was like, oh, wait, they're offering this to me. Like yeah. I'm, I'm still shocked. And I hope that I'm always shocked. I hope, because I think when the shock is gone, like that's it. It's over. I mean, yeah. Like if you're at j at the point where you're jaded about the roles you're getting, that's right. Kind of like, and you're so, like, oh, like, whatever. Another, another Avengers movie. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> um, exactly. So you're in results playing at South by Southwest. People can stay tuned. I'm sure there'll be other festivals and whatnot after us. Um, is there anything else? that you want people to stay tuned for you going forward? Is there social media sites or something that people well, should follow to keep up to date with what I you have, got going? I uh, have my TV show that I'm starring in is premier world premiering here at South by on Monday. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I had... Which, that's, which show is that? Um, it's called Unreal. Oh, okay. And it's, it's A&E's first scripted series for mm -hmm. Lifetime since they took over wow, the fantastic. Lifetime brand. Okay. Um, and that world premieres here, which is super exciting because yes. the girl, being an AFI director had her, her short here that she wrote and directed, really? I think, wow. two years ago. And uh, Lifetime saw it and bought it and great. made it into a TV show. Fantastic. So, so that show is premiering when? That premieres on Monday. What is that? March? Well, I mean like the actual premiere on Oh, TV. that is June 1st. June 1st. Okay, yeah. and that's on A&E. Um, uh, well, it's actually on Lifetime. Oh, yes, Lifetime took over for A&E. Um, I got it. And now. then, you know, Entourage movie comes out June 5th. Very nice. It's going to be a very busy weekend. And uh, Twitter, anything that people should follow you for more up-to-date information about the happenings? Or yeah, I am on Twitter. You know, I'm not, not very a much of a good tweeter. at it. No, I actually tweet a lot. I just don't know how much of it is actually. I feel like it's hard to fuck up <laughs> tweeting. It's a pretty like, pretty basic thing. I'm sure your tweets are very fine. No, um, but yeah, I mean, my Twitter is just at Constant Simmer. It's pretty easy, pretty I'm jealous of those people that get their full name in there. Yeah. I can't fit mine. I did. Well. My name's just as long as yours, is it not? Uh, uh, my yeah, my last be. name's ten. First name's like seven. So. Oh, I don't even know offhand. But um, and I close. to actually, what is today? Saturday. Saturday, the um, fourteenth. Yeah. Tonight, um, if this, do you air this today? I can try. You can try. Well, tonight, um, Transformers, the new Transformers cartoon is premiering. That I'm the voice of one of the Autobots. I'm a very transformer. Cool. Yeah, See, so very cool. See, I get like to that. be I get to be a transformer in who a knows? cartoon. Next movie rolls around. Who knows? <laughs> Possibilities. You could just roll up the food chain. Right. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, Constance. I wish thank you the best you. of luck with with luck with everything you have coming up because it sounds like uh, you're keeping pretty busy. And I thank look you. forward to seeing what I'm you do. I'm trying. Next. I'm trying. As long as they keep calling. They'll keep, keep calling. Saying, I yeah. told you, Avengers 3, plan on it. <laughs> Just book it, block the time out. We'll, okay, we'll get that good. worked out. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the sound stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.